Okay, in this video, I'm going to finish off exercise 3D of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics, and this also finishes off the chapter on projectiles. So the question I'm going to do is number 9, and it reads as follows. It says that a plane is inclined at an angle tan inverse 1 half to the horizontal. A particle is projected up the plane with vertical velocity u at an angle theta to the plane. The particle strikes the plane parallel to the horizontal. Express t, the time of flight, in terms of u and theta. Hence or otherwise calculate, hence or otherwise, excuse me, establish tan theta is equal to a third. And we're asked finally to calculate the range. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is sketch the motion. So I'm going to draw my y-axis, my x-axis, making my xy or Cartesian plane. Next, I draw my incline, which I'm going to call my x prime axis. I draw a perpendicular to that, the y prime axis. We are inclined, just get the angles correct. So we'll say this, the velocity vector here, is inclined at angle theta to the to the to the, uh, to the incline, and I'm going to say this angle here is alpha. We know, of course, what tan alpha is. So the gravity vector goes in the negative y direction like so. And getting rid of the statement here, we can draw in the unit vectors, which are going to be parallel to the x prime, y prime axes. All right. So let's, if we were resolved the initial velocity vector u, we'd say that u is equal to u sub x i hat plus u sub y j hat. And u is equal to u times the cos of theta i hat plus u times the sine of theta j. If we resolve our gravity vector, we need to, of course, draw the two vectors which are added together to create that vector. They must be parallel to the x prime and y prime axes. So we draw a line, first of all, parallel to the y prime, then parallel to the x prime. They are at right angles. They must be at these directions, the two vectors, in order to add together and create g. So this is v sub y, or excuse me, not v sub y, this is g sub y, and this is g sub x. So we can say here that g, vector g is equal to g sub x i hat plus g sub y j hat. And g is equal to, now this angle here is alpha, because this will say these two lines bisect these two lines at right angles. So we can say this is g times the sine of alpha i hat plus g times the cosine of alpha j hat. The next thing is we're actually given the value for alpha. We're told we're told that it's tan, tan of a half, tan alpha is equal to half. So if we draw our right triangle, we get the following. Using Pythagoras, we'll find this is equal to one over or the excuse me, the hypotenuse is root five. So we can say that cosine is two over root five and sine is equal to one over root 5. Alright, so so for that reason we can say this, we can change the two of these here. So we said cosine was equal to 2 over root 5, so this becomes 2g over root 5. This just becomes g over root 5, like so. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is just draw in my uvest because we've no need to look at the diagram anymore. So we have the x prime axis and the y prime axis. We have u v a s t, and let's just plug in the values which we know already. You know this is u times the cos of theta. This is u times the sine of theta. This was equal to g times the sine of alpha, which turned out to be g over root five. If I'm correct. So sine was. Yeah, so g over root 5. And this here was, uh, this was 2g over root 5. t and t. So we know, of course, that v is equal to u plus at. So this becomes u times the cos of theta plus gt over root 5. And this becomes u times the sine of theta 
plus 2gt over root 5. And if we use s is equal to ut plus a half at squared, we get this is equal to u times the cos of theta t plus g over 2 root 5 t squared. And we get u times the sine of theta t plus uh, g over root 5 times t squared. So what are we told? We're told that the particle lands horizontally. So what we need to do is find the time at which the particle is on the ground. So of course, as normal, the condition for this is that s sub y, the distance above the x prime axis is equal to zero. So we get u times the sine of theta times t plus g over root five t squared is equal to zero. All right, so if we take out t, we get u times the sine of theta plus g over root 5t. That's equal to 0. So where you have two quantities multiplied together to get 0, one of them is 0. So you get t is equal to 0 and you get that t is equal to negative root 5 times u times sine theta over g. So I'm just going to take note of this down here. All right, grant. So now we know the time at which the particle is after hitting the ground. So the next thing we need to do is find the angle at which it hits the ground. So how to do this is we, as we've done in the past, we analyze the final, the final velocity vector or the v vector. So we'll say, for example, this here is our incline, and this is our horizontal. So this is x prime. This is x. So if the particle hits like so. This is a velocity vector v. If we resolve that, we're going to get these two vectors here. This is v sub x and this is v sub y. If you use tan and call this angle here psi, then tan psi is equal to vy over vx. So what I'm going to do now is plug in the time we just discovered, or calculated shall we say, and I'm going to plug that into v sub x and v sub y. So v sub x is equal to u cos theta and it's minus now actually one second, I'm just going to note this time over here we had uh, what was it again it was negative root 5 times u times sine theta over g alright so here we had g times or g over root 5 times this so it was root 5 u sine theta over g. The gravity values cancel and so does the root 5 values. And we get this. So we can say that u v sub x is equal to u times the cosine of theta minus the sine of theta. Alright, so just take note of that. And in a similar fashion, we calculate v sub y. So v sub y is equal to u times the sine of theta uh, minus g times the cosine of beta times root 5, uh, root 5 times u times the sine of theta over g, like so. Alright? So we can cancel, of course, the g values, like so, and we get as a result v sub y is equal to u outside of sine theta, well, we could say u sine theta in actual fact. Uh, cos of, oh yeah, what was cos of beta? Sorry, the cos of beta, uh, no, where were we, why did I have beta there? Excuse me, I'm looking at my notes. I called that, um, uh, I called that alpha, didn't I? We knew what that was. So, excuse me now, I'm just after I probably just confused the issue, the issue there. So we had 2g over root 5, and that was divided by g there. So as a result, we can cancel the g, and cancel the root 5s here like so. So we get u times the, let's redo this all together, and after making a bit of a bag of this. So we get u sine theta minus 2u sine theta 
which works out as negative u times the sine of theta. Yeah, sorry about that. Now, it's just, we, we've done this calculation a number of times. I just I was looking at my notes and kind of getting a bit confused there. All right, so we have, uh, yeah, we have v sub y is equal to negative u times the sine of theta. So just to confirm what we've worked out as the velocity vector, we had v is equal to v sub x times i hat plus v sub y times j hat. That was equal to, <coughs> excuse me, u cos theta minus u sine theta i hat plus minus u sine theta j hat. And that's equal to the v, uh, the v vector, the velocity vector. All right. Now, we know, of course, that tan of psi is equal to v sub x over v sub y. Excuse me, the other way around, v sub y over v sub x. So this we need to, uh, we need to, I suppose, work this out, okay? So let's just use these values here, and we're going to get tan of psi is equal to, all right, so we had u sine theta, over u cos theta minus u sine theta. All right, now I'm just going to get rid of the piece of information that are cluttering up our diagram, like so. And I'm going to go back up to the top here. Just give me a moment, please. u sine theta over u cos theta minus u sine theta. All right, of course, the thing we can cancel straight out of that is u. So you have sine theta over cos theta minus sine theta. Now, to see what we're able to work out here. All right, so that is, uh, that is the value for the angle at which the particle hits the ground. And that is equal to a half. Now, why is it equal to a half? Because the particle hits horizontally. So let's just draw the diagram here. So we had our incline, we had our x-axis. Now, if I draw the velocity vector, so the velocity vector is coming in like this. This is the v-vector. And it is parallel to the x-axis, like so. This angle down here we had was equal to, uh, I called it alpha initially, whereby tan inverse alpha was equal to a half. All right? So that means this angle here is also equal to alpha, all right? But we've just worked out that this angle was equal to the, the uh, we'll say the angle psi, at the angle which the particle hits the ground. So we can change this and say tan alpha. But we know what tan alpha is because it is equal to a half. So we have a half here, all right? So if we just rearrange and manipulate this, we're going to get the following. We're going to get 2u times the sine of theta is equal to u cos theta minus u sine theta. And if we rearrange that, you're going to get sine theta over cos theta is equal to a third. And therefore tan theta is equal to a third, as required. All right, so that wasn't too bad. Now, uh, the last thing I asked to find is the range along the plane. All right, the range along the plane. Okay, so that's not too bad either. Okay, so the range, of course, is the maximum value of s sub x. So we say s sub x is equal to this thing up here. However, it's at the time donated by this value here. So we get u times the cos of theta times minus root 5 u sine of theta over g. And we have negative g over 2 root 5. That's actually not a negative, it's a positive. And we square this so we get 5 u squared. We get sine squared theta over g squared. Now just let me look at this now, make sure we've got correct 5. Yeah, that's correct. That's okay. So let's just do our small bit of cancelling and get rid of the g and the square. 
and get rid of this root 5 and turn this one into a root 5 and that becomes over 2 like that alright so let's just rearrange this so we're going to get negative root 5 u squared cos theta sine theta over g plus root 5 over 2 g u squared sine squared theta alright so we're not doing too bad so far we just need to I suppose manipulate this a small bit so how are we going to manipulate this? Well, first of all, we know what was theta, the value for theta is because we just worked it out. We worked out that tan theta is equal to a third. So let's just draw that right triangle. All right, so this turns out to root, root 10. So we know that cos theta is equal to 3 over root 10. And we know that sine theta, theta excuse me, is 1 over root 10. So let's just plug those values in here. Okay, so we get equals, I'm going to do this in blue, negative root 5 times u squared times cos theta, was, which was 3 over root 10, times sine theta, which is 1 over root 10, divided by g. So we'll just do that 1 over g like so, plus root 5 over 2g times u squared sine squared will be 1 over 10 all right so I can get rid of my little note down here so let's just rearrange that and we're going to get that turns out to be 10 so we're going to get root 5 over 10 we could say this is that's root 2 so it would be negative u squared times 3 over 2 root 10 times g plus that big, oh that's not root, that's uh, root 10 that's root 10 because root 2, okay, so we get plus u squared over 2g times 2 root 10 is that root 2? sorry, that's root 2 alright, so that's a root 2 as well so let us just add that together, so what did we get there? What was different there? That two. Okay, just let me have a look at the uh, the answer at the back of the book. Will I look at the answer at the back of the book first? Once I have a feeling I've made a mistake with my algebra here. Just let me cut this. Yeah, and that's root two. So root two times root ten. So that we will say will it be root twenty? Let's call it root twenty. Like so. Here we had two root twenty like so all right so I just need to add these okay so this is uh, how are we going to add these we're going to add these by getting some more space first of all I know this is pretty elementary but I'm uh, I have to say I'm pretty poor at this so we get negative 3 u squared root 20 g plus u squared over 2 g root 20 all right so if you put out the common factor of u squared over root 20g, we get negative 3u squared plus 1 over 2, which is half u squared. And we'll actually, we pull out the u squared already, excuse me. So it's a half minus 3. And so we'll just uh, plug that into the calculator because I'm terrible at this. So we get negative 5 over 2u squared root 20g. And that's a positive number because we know that g is a negative number. So I'm just going to check that now in the back of the book. So 3d root 5u squared over 4g. Root 5u squared over 4g. So um, root 5 u squared over 4g root 5 yeah that's equal to the same thing because um, we could say this here 2 root 20 is equal to 4 root 5 times g over negative 5 u squared cancel that 5 turn it into root 5 with this here 
and you get negative root 5 u squared over 4g, which is correct. All right, so sorry about my, my algebra there. I apologize in advance about that. So that was reasonably straightforward. That, ch uh, that chapter was quite challenging. Uh, it's definitely the hardest chapter we've done so far. It might even be one of the hardest chapters, apart from relative velocity, which is next. However, it's not too bad once you get the, once you get the, the, we'll say the procedures and drills in place. So thanks for watching. Pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.